Vamos a pensar que esto nació de, de un meteorito. Okay, so today we're diving into this piece about the uh, the Panama meteorite claims. You know, the one with the alleged alien organism. Right, and all the buzz it created online. Exactly. And the material does a pretty solid job laying out the claims, the viral spread. What I think is interesting is how it ties it into the whole UAP discourse happening right now. Yeah, that connection feels timely. It does. And I think the piece raises this really critical question, maybe implicitly, but one we can push on. Why this specific story is hitting such a nerve right now. That's it. Exactly. And that leads right into the first big opportunity here, I think. It's about carving out a more, let's say, distinctive analytical niche. Okay. Because the weakness, as I see it, is that while it covers the facts and different views, it kind of risks just echoing what other media are saying. You know, it doesn't quite offer that truly fresh interpretation, your unique insight. So it's reporting well, but not interpreting enough? Precisely. It covers the what, the claims, the interest, the science, parallels, but maybe doesn't dig deep enough into the why in a way that makes the analysis stand out. Gotcha. So the suggestion is pretty straightforward. Develop a more distinctive angle. Interrogate why the story resonates so strongly now. Link it beyond just, you know, surface stuff to something deeper. Societal trends maybe psychological factors. Moving from reporting to real interpretation. Exactly. That way it becomes an original take on the significance of it all. Gives it a unique voice, lasting impact. You've got all the ingredients. It's just about making that interpretation really compelling. I like that. Shifting from the what to the why. So what kind of angles are we talking about? How could the writer make it more distinctive? Well, okay. Here are a few ideas. For instance, instead of just saying people are interested, you could frame it around the psychology of belief, especially now in this era of viral content. Ah, okay. Think about Dylan Borland's UAP testimony. How did something like that maybe possibly prime the pump, make people more receptive to these kinds of extraordinary claims? So like heightened credulity? Yeah, or exploring the psychological triggers. You know, UAP reports, hints of government secrecy, the unexplained. Does our need for meaning play into it? Confirmation bias. How does social media maybe create a sort of collective openness to wild ideas? Interesting. What else? Or you could go sociological. Look at the impact of these unverified claims on platforms like TikTok. How do they amplify uncertainty, maybe challenge the usual scientific gatekeepers? Right, the speed of it all. Yeah, the speed, the echo chambers, how it might fuel skepticism towards established facts. It's like a real-time experiment in how narrative spread and authority gets questioned. Okay, that's another strong angle. And one more, maybe. The policy implications of recent UAP disclosures. By acknowledging some unexplained things, do governments inadvertently make people more likely to believe other unverified stuff like this meteorite? Mm. Creating fertile ground. Exactly. How do officials navigate that? What pressures does it create for verification or denial? How does that whole dynamic affect public trust? You know, how does acknowledging some unknowns shift the public's idea of what's possible? Those are really concrete ways to push beyond just reporting. Very helpful. These are just a few possibilities, obviously. The goal is just to make the analysis really stand out, move from observation to, you know, deeper insight. Definitely. Okay, that connects really well to the next point, actually, which is the scientific side of things. The material brings up extremophile studies, that 2023 paper. Right, the communications, earth, and environment one. Solid context. Yeah, and it does highlight the lack of peer review for the Panama claim, the sensational TikTok stuff. But I'm wondering, maybe we could dissect how science actually deals with these kinds of novel, sometimes really out there claims. You've nailed a key point there. Yes. While the piece mentions plausibility and skepticism, it could really benefit from a deeper dive into how scientific verification actually works in these cases. Okay. The weakness right now, potentially, is that it doesn't fully explore the, let's call it the spectrum of scientific engagement or the nuances of judging sources online. It risks making it sound like a simple binary. It's either real science or it's a hoax. When the reality is much messier. 
Exactly. It's a process, often slow, iterative, especially with brand new claims or claims coming through weird channels, right? Not just a simple yes, no. So what's the suggestion then? Suggestion is really deep in the exploration of scientific methodology. How are novel claims actually verified? And critically examine the evidence presented online or the lack of it. Why does that absence matter? Right. This gives readers a much better grasp of the whole vetting process. Moving beyond just saying, no peer review, to showing why that's crucial and what it really implies. It helps people see that dance between discovery, review, and acceptance, especially for something huge like potential alien life. Explaining the why behind the process, not just the what. That makes sense. So how could the writer illustrate that effectively, make it clear for the reader? Okay, to get concrete, you could lay out the specific protocols for verifying media rights. It's not just, hey, found a rock. Right. There's the chain of custody for samples needs to be documented, verifiable. Where did it come from? Who handled it? Then the actual analysis, like spectroscopy to figure out its composition. And crucially, independent verification, getting other labs to confirm the results. And then contrast the Panama claim against those standards. Exactly. Show where it deviates. It gives the reader a toolkit almost for evaluating future claims. It's like space rock forensics. Okay, what else? You could also unpack what lack of peer-reviewed evidence really means. It's not all the same thing, right? How so? Well, there's a big difference between a legit new discovery that's just waiting for review, that's normal science, and a claim that's maybe been looked at and debunked, or one that never even got submitted for serious scrutiny. Ah, the difference between not yet proven and disproven, or unprovable with current info. Precisely. That nuance is vital for science literacy. Without that rigorous process, even cool observations are just observations, not verified science. Think about medicine. You don't just take a new drug because of a viral post. You wait for trials, for review. Good analogy. And maybe one more angle here, the idea of information arbitrage in science, reporting. Information arbitrage? Explain that. It's basically how these early, unverified claims often spread way faster and wider than the careful, slow scientific review. Social media loves novelty, speed. Hmm, not necessarily accuracy. Right. So a TikTok about an alien rock gets millions of views in hours. Meanwhile, the actual science might take months, years. By the time verified info comes out, the public narrative might already be set by the unverified stuff. Creates a huge challenge for scientists trying to communicate accurately. A massive challenge. Remember the face on Mars? That image got huge traction way before any real scientific analysis could debunk the face idea. That's kind of what I mean. The initial flashy claim dominating perception. Okay, these examples really help flesh out how to focus on the rigor, the process itself. Very useful. Yeah, the aim is just to show the process, not just state the outcome. Yeah, I see that. And that information arbitrage point feels very current. It connects well to the broader context you mentioned earlier, tying this specific Panama thing to the UAP fascination, the Borland testimony. It sets the stage well, but how do we push that further, get to the real implications? That's a great question, and it leads right into the third, maybe final big opportunity here. It's about really articulating the broader significance, the so what, of this whole Panama meteorite episode. Okay. The weakness, perhaps, is that while the piece describes what's happening really effectively, the speculation, the science context, the public interest, it could hit harder on the why it matters. What are the bigger lessons here? for science communication, for public trust, maybe even for policy down the line. It describes the scene, but doesn't quite draw the larger conclusions. Something like that. It sets the stage perfectly, but maybe hesitates to fully interpret the deeper meanings or warnings embedded in this whole situation. Like, what does it say about how ready we are as a society for genuinely extraordinary discoveries? Right, so the suggestion? Elevate the discussion. Connect this specific incident to bigger, enduring trends, public understanding of science, the fight against misinformation, the future of discovery in this super-connected, often sensationalized world we live in. Turn it from just a report into a more thought-provoking commentary. Exactly. Use this event as a lens to look at these larger universal themes that go way beyond just one rock in Panama. Okay, that's the goal. Make it resonate more broadly, give it that lasting impact, how could the writer actually do that? What are some concrete ways to get at that so what? 
Okay, let's brainstorm. One way, frame Panama as a case study in what you could call epistemic friction. Epistemic friction. Sounds academic. Ah, yeah, maybe a bit. But it just means that clash, that tension, between the slow, careful way science works and the super-fast, often unverified way information spreads on social media. Ah, the speed mismatch again. Right. Explore how platforms like TikTok, with their speed and sort of democratic nature, directly conflict with the deliberate pace of scientific checking and balancing. It creates this gap in understanding, maybe even erodes trust. It's like they're speaking different languages. That's a powerful frame. What else? You could link it directly to the fragility of public trust in institutions, scientific ones, governmental ones, especially when official responses seem slow or totally absent. The notes mentioned that listener concern about the lack of response from authorities or scientists, right? Yeah, that came up. That's a perfect jumping off point. How does that perceived vacuum get filled? Usually by speculation, by unverified stuff. And over time, that can chip away at faith in credible sources. If the official channels are quiet, people look elsewhere. Makes sense. The vacuum gets filled one way or another. For sure. And maybe a final thought. Analyze this whole incident as a sort of preview, a glimpse of how future discoveries, maybe even legitimate ones, about extraterrestrial life might be received. Wow. Okay. I mean, imagine if we got definitive proof tomorrow. How would that news survive in this information environment? With instant claims, counterclaims, a public may be already cynical from past hoaxes or hype? It highlights huge challenges for communicating complex science. Absolutely. It makes the Panama story a kind of cautionary tale, maybe even a lesson for how scientists and communicators need to prepare for communicating potentially world-changing news amidst all this noise. Those are really strong ways to elevate the significance, underscore that, so what, beyond just this one event. Yeah, exactly. Making its relevance clear far beyond just Panama. Okay, so just to recap quickly, we've talked about refining the material by, first, creating a more distinctive analytical angle, really digging into the why now. Right, moving beyond just reporting. Second, deepening the focus on scientific scrutiny, not just saying, no peer review, but really showing the process of verification and why it matters. Maybe touching on things like information arbitrage. Yeah, explaining the methodology. And third, really articulating the broader significance connecting this specific event to larger trends in trust, misinformation, and the future of science communication. Getting to that powerful so what. Exactly. Sharpen the angle, deepen the science context, and elevate the significance. Great. So the suggestion is definitely to take these ideas, think about developing that unique interpretive lens, flesh out the scientific verification nuances, and really connect the dots to those bigger themes. Sounds like a plan. And definitely we'd love for you to take these suggestions, rework the piece, and absolutely submit it back to us. We'd be really interested to see where you take it for another round of critique.